Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video or it helps you, please don't forget to drop a like on it as it helps me a lot. Thanks and enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's Brett and welcome to my Rune Wild Money Making Guide. So in this video, I'll be covering a couple different topics such as bossing, slayer, and other miscellaneous things you can do for some money. If you'd like to skip to a certain point, there will be timestamps in the description. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So when you join RuneWild, you do have to create an account using an email. After you create an account and log in, you can speak to the town crier to claim rewards for activating your email and voting. Doing this will give you a dragon defender which is untradeable and you keep it on death and 5 mil cash. 5 mil cash is quite a bit of starter money as it's almost enough to buy yourself a Darox set. Probably one of the best money making methods on this game is PKing. You really don't need that much gear to get started. Everything you're seeing me use in this first clip, you have when you start out. When you log in, you'll have a choice to receive a temporary AGS. If you use it wisely and basically only use it for the specs, it'll last you quite a while and by the time you've used it up, you'll have quite a bit of cash. If you take a look in your quest tab, at the bottom of it, you can see there's an area called the Wilderness Hotspot. If you PK in that hotspot, you'll receive at least a 75% boost on the blood money you get per kill. Depending on the area, this could actually increase. But since this is a money making guide, I suggest going to only the Edgeville one. Another reason why P. Kang is such a good money maker, or can be I should say, is after you get a kill, you do have a chance to receive a casket. The color of casket you receive is based off of rarity, and obviously the more rare the casket the better the loot. Caskets can be opened with either a casket key or by just using blood money. Obviously these are a gamble, no matter which way you decide to open them, but a lot of people enjoy them, they're fun, and you have a chance to get something really good out of it. If you want to see what you can get from caskets, or get a further explanation on them, check out the video link in the description below. The first one to enter the giveaway on this video with the word KEY included in their comment will receive one for free. Next one is very simple, it's just voting. To vote in game, you type colon colon vote, you go to each vote page, click the little checkbox and click vote, and then after you're done in game, type colon colon claim for a free vote mystery box, blood money, and vote points, which can be used at the shop. So the next method is blood barraging in the catacombs. You can do this at almost any point in the game, but it is recommended you get at least 55 slayer. The higher the slayer monster you kill, the better drops you're going to get. But how it basically works is as you can see, you literally just go to any monster where you're able to actually hit them because you have the slayer level. It could be hellhounds, could be greater demons, whatever you're able to kill. You stack them up and you just sit there and blood barrage them in AFK. That's it. After the stack is gone, you just walk over and pick up all the blood money and repeat the process. This is a very, very overlooked money making method. I almost feel like it should be nerfed because it's not in the wilderness, so it's completely safe, but yet you make so much money from it. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but at the end of the day, it's a good money making method. If you want to get started with Slayer before doing the catacombs, head over to where the general store is meant to be and talk to Duradel to get a task. You can also extend or upgrade your tasks by going to the reward section. You'll also make a little bit of money while training Slayer, so Slayer is also kind of viable. Another great method is actually by doing your daily achievements. Most of the time, these are actually quite easy and he reduced the amount from 6 to only 3 achievements that you need to complete for the reward. You may be discouraged when you get something such as Fish 500 Angler Fish, but the only painful process of getting to that point is actually the level. Once you have the level and go to the resource area, it's actually extremely fast and you can actually just note the fish you get there. You also catch two at a time since it's in the wilderness, so it just makes it so much easier. As you see on screen now, you can also just set your stats very low so no one can attack you. Obviously, if someone really wants to, they could just gear up and come kill you, but I don't know, it doesn't really happen often. Don't forget to bring around 1.2 mil cash so you can note the fish or logs that you get. I won't be going over how to complete every achievement as they're pretty self-explanatory, but as you can see after completing all three of your daily achievements, you get a free super mystery box, 10 mil cash, and a crystal key. It's honestly such an amazing award for just a little work you have to put in. Obviously it can be a little bit of a grind, but it gives you something to do and it's a good reward. Don't forget, there are also weekly and all time achievements that you can complete if you hit the arrows at the top for even bigger rewards. Another one of the best money makers in the game is wilderness bosses. Some of them require a certain amount of risk in order to attack them, but the reason they require a risk is because they are very profitable and having risk encourages PKers to come as well. I'm not going to be doing a guide on how to kill the bosses, I'm just going to let you know that they are very viable. 
If you want a guide on how to kill them, there will be a link to a forums post in the description that's insanely detailed. If you need any more information, go to your quest tab and at the top left, click on view wiki and go to bosses and you'll have all the information that you need. As you can see on the screen, you can also go to your quest tab to view the drops of any monster in the game. Of course, one of the best money makers that will always exist is gambling. Now, I do not suggest this if you want to play the game and actually have fun. The reason I say that is because once you are rich on this game, and just about any game to be honest, it gets quite boring. You lose the fun of, you know, upgrading your, let's say, your rune armor into barrows or PKing a whip or anything like that. Once you're rich, it just kind of takes away that fun and you're just kind of playing for no reason. So yes, if you just want to kind of get rich quick or lose it all, you never know what's going to happen. Staking and flower poker, things like that are viable, but I don't exactly suggest them, of course, because if you lose your bank, you're going to be upset. Staking, flower poker, and dicing is all very safe and fully automated on RuneWild, so you don't have to worry about any scammers. That's going to be it for now. I know there's quite a bit of other methods such as Vorkath, Treasure Chest, Tournaments, etc. But I wanted this to be a guide for new players who don't already play RuneWild or don't know very much about it. So if this video helped you or you just enjoyed my content in general, please don't forget to enter the giveaway down below, leave a like on this video, be subscribed to me, and turn on those notifications. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.